Good morning. Good morning. Leah, I want to issue a very warm welcome to everybody who came out in the cold today. I'm just so glad to see so many of you here. And we're delighted to have those who are visiting with us this morning, whom we'll hear from later, especially Dr. Branch and his wife. And we will um, be having a congregational gathering after worship, so don't leave after the postlude. I'll remind you again about that. Uh, now, we do have a couple of announcements. One is that uh, the youth need feeding. They always need feeding. <laughs> but they especially need feeding on Sunday night. And if you would be willing to take that on, please, please see Caitlin after church or contact her either by email or her phone number, which is in the directory. So you know how to find her. Um, but they, uh, they're hungry. Kids are hungry. They're growing. <laughs> so please help her out with that. And also, next week, of course, is finally we'll be through Epiphany, and it will be time to take down the Chris Mung tree and the decorations. And this has become a, a church-wide event, not just a, a few as aging women. <laughs> so we'd really like everybody who can next week to stay. You can even wear your comfortable clothes if you want to be able to help to take the decorations down. We really appreciate having everyone's help. Gail will be in charge of that but we'll all be working together, right, on the 9th? Is that right? Did I have the wrong date? What time? When, uh, do you want to do it? Well, it's, it, you'll, get more, you'll get more help if you can do it right after church. Okay, that's why we did it last year, I think, or the year before. So that, that way we'll, we'll have a, a full crew of strong men, right? <laughs> So I hope, hope you'll be able to be here for that and stay, stay for that next week. I don't believe there are any other announcements at this time, so let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please stand for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, O you people. The God of all creation animates our bodies with the breath of the Spirit.
Ahead, be seated. Who is worthy to stand before God? None but Christ alone. The Son of God came in the flesh of a human body to live among us. It is Christ who redeems us, gathers us, gathering our tears and our fears, redeeming each and every one. With this confidence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Gather your children who run and hide, ashamed, afraid, apathetic. We trade your goodness for ashes. We trade your peace for control. We trade your promise for certainty. Gather us to you and return us to your abundant mercy. May it flow over us, renewing our weary souls. Hear now our silent prayers of confession. Amen. The light of all life and the breath of all creation claims you, calling you good from the very beginning, very good. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, open our ears to hear your words in a new way at the beginning of this new year, remembering that you're speaking directly to us in order that we may live fully as you would have us to be. We ask in Christ's name, amen. Our scriptures this morning, um, again, come from the lectionary, but you're going to hear a slightly different version. I've chosen for the new year to give us the words as they're found in the message. And so it's going to be a little bit different, even though these are familiar passages and they are both wonderful. I really wish uh, I normally sometimes read all four of them, but I'm getting two this morning. But the Ephesians message first comes from the first chapter, verses 3 to 14. Please listen and hear God's word. How blessed is God! And what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family, through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we're a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us and had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, 
found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This down payment from God is the first installment on what's coming, a reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us, a praising and glorious life. And from John, as much as I love the familiar words, I also love the way uh, it's put in Peterson's version, the life light. The word was first, the word present to God, God present to the word. The word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness and the darkness couldn't put it out. There was once a man, his name was John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light, he was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, whoever believed that he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, the child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, the one I told you was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He's always been ahead of me, had always had the first word. We all live off his generous abundance, gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses and then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding, all this came through Jesus the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, not so much as a glimpse. This one of a kind God expression, Christ, who exists at the very heart of the Father, has made him plain as day. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. You know, I probably could just stop there. If you were really listening to all that, you kind of know what I'm going to say, but I'll, I want to point out a few more things and lift up some things that have been running through my mind for the last two, three weeks. First of all, this is kind of an odd time of year. You know, we've, we've, a lot of people finish Christmas and then that, that's it. I was so happy when I walked in because I was almost afraid, you know, that, that uh, we wouldn't, that the decorations wouldn't still be up. But we know that Epiphany hasn't come yet. That's this week. So we really are still, this is actually the second Sunday of Christmas. So we're still in that Christmas season. But we've already had New Year and, and New Year's Day, and we've got this weird weather that's doing strange things. And, and what a year it's been. We were kind of hoping we'd, we'd all be done with, with COVID and everything, but no, it's still around. And we're still having to be, be careful. And we just don't know what might be coming. But, but what I love when I read these messages was that we know <laughs> We know what's coming because we are children of God. So there's two or three things that I wanted, wanted to lift up. First of all, one of the things I've discovered when I looked a little closer into Epiphany, you know, I've always known that it meant the coming of the wise men, but the word itself means revelation. Well, isn't that perfect? God was revealed in Christ, and, and the last word of Scripture is revelation. So it's all about Christ coming as a tiny child, 
growing as we all have and did and showing us what it's like to really be children of God, this manifestation. It's a moment of illumination as well. Sometimes you can have a personal epiphany about something. I've had a lot in my life where something suddenly dawned on me. And a lot of time it's like, oh, you know, why didn't I see that before? And maybe I didn't see it because I wasn't ready to see it, or maybe I didn't see it because other things were clouding my mind. But when that epiphany comes, it's like a huge light has shined on us. So that's another reason when I thought of what, what do I want to call this message this morning? You light up my life. Now, this is not referring to that wonderful song that we all grew up, although <laughs> we know it. And in, in a way, it does. It says, you light up my life. You give me strength to carry on. Well, isn't that what Christ <laughs> is for us the light of our life that gives us strength to carry on when i uh we had our candlelight service up here, here christmas eve and it was a beautiful time because we also welcomed into the church betty's grandchild little maddie mccaslin baptized and part of that was adopting her into our church family as well one of the things that we promised to do was to welcome her and to help nurture her, just as we would a child of our own, because she is a child of our own, just as we are all children of God. The Ephesians passage just points that out over and over again. We have been adopted into Christ's family. We're all children of God. We're all made in God's image. And it's not just us in this sanctuary this morning or those folks watching or watching later. It's all of God's creatures, every one of us. So we're all part of that wonderful family of God. But I went home after the candlelight service, and I've been lighting my little own Advent wreath at home, and it was time to light the Christ candle. <laughs> and I lit it, and there was the tiniest, tiniest little flame. I mean, it was just barely caught. And I thought, oh no, you know, I was really worried for a minute that it was going to go out. But just like Christ's light, it did not go out. <laughs> As I sat there and read the scriptures and the Advent devotionals I'd been using, that light got brighter and brighter and brighter. And every day I still light that candle and it continues to glow without fail. I've added even more candles. I have one of those that's got the three wicks in it. And I kind of like that because it reminds me of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's that Holy Spirit that's going to help and enable us to keep that light shining within us. And we know it's there because we've been promised. We've been promised that. Another time when there were sort of flickering candles, I remember gathering for a Christmas Eve service in China, the first, second year I was there. And we decided to go out on this hill around a tree. And it was almost as cold as it is outside this morning. So we're all bundled up. And, we, and there's a little wind blowing, and we all have our candles. And we start trying to light the candles and share them with each other. <laughs> and one would go out. But there was always one that didn't go out. And we finally kept at it long enough that everybody's candle was lit by the time. And we were all, you know, shielding that little flickering flame. But we kept it going because we know that we can those, those two images of, of how light can seem like it's about to be extinguished, but it's not. It's always there, always there. So we have to find out what we could do to see that light in ourselves. Another thing that I loved about what the scripture had to say was that God wants us to be our true selves God loves us and accepts us for who we are and wants us to use our gifts. And the other thing we know is that everything we have, all our talents, all our wealth, whether it's what we put in the collection plate, 
anything that we have is a gift from God. We didn't have anything to do with it in, uh, except that we chose to use God's gifts. So my challenge to us this morning is to live in that light, to live in that light, to be God's light in the world, to keep that flame going and to share it with others and to let them know that they too are part of God's family, that they too are children of the light. We all are. So if we recognize that we're all family, that we're going to have a world that's going to be better for everyone. If we really understand that, we're going to do things that are going to encourage peace and justice for all. We're going to do things that are going to help improve the world around us. We're going to be concerned because we're all part of a family. This family in this congregation, the family in our community, and the family around the world. We're all children of the light. As we leave, I also want you to think about this. I always like to be reminded. When I look back on my life, we talk about saints of the church. But I think every one of us has, could name someone or maybe many people, I think many people in our lives, who have been particularly bright, who have been particularly good at showing us that light and in the ways how did they do it and when I think of the people that I know it was not people who proclaimed the loudest or people who were the most outgoing even it was the steady quiet joyful people it was the people who knew they were God's children who lived as God's children and who showed through their very lives and their actions that they were God's children, and they wanted all of us to feel that. So think of those people in your lives. I've often posted on Facebook, let's be the good that we appreciate in others. Let's try to share Christ's light. Amen and amen. Let us now stand as we say what we believe with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
may be seated. This time, we return a portion of the gifts that God has given to us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we offer these gifts not only of our wealthy earnings, but also of our lives to you, knowing that we are only returning the glorious gift that you have given to us. Help us to use them wisely to show your light in this world. Amen.
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and from east and west to sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. It's not the table of this church or the Presbyterian church. It is open to all, all. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. Creator of the cosmos, breath of heaven, lover of us all, you are our praise, our life, our joy. You are there through desert wanderings and willful murmurings, rebellious running and tears of complaint. You are there when sorrow becomes our daily food. You rescue us from ruin and anoint us with blessing. Rising sun, soaring spirit, radiant Lord, you are there in stable and temple, river and hillside, cross and tomb, and even beyond the grave. You are there in shining glory, overcoming death and welcoming us to life. You meet us in the breaking of bread. You pour out the wine of salvation. You feed us with grace and overwhelm us with love. By your spirit, make these gifts your body and your blood. By your spirit, make us one with you and with each other. By your spirit, make us strong that we may share your love with your blessed and broken world. Fount of mercy, fire of justice, dearest friend, bind us to you and send us out to seek and serve and sing your praise until you gather us up in glory and bright unending song. And hear now as we pray that prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes.
God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, continuing forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord and showing his light to the world. Amen. Before I give you the charge and benediction, just a reminder that right after the postlude is over, please join us where we're going to be introduced to and hear from, from Dr. Branch. I'm very excited about that. So uh, just relax. But now, let's find my. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers half-truths and superficial relationships so that you will live deeply and from the heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, at oppression, and the exploitation of people so that you'll work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those that mourn so you'll reach out your hand to them and turn their mourning into joy. May God bless you with just enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this old world so that you'll do those things that others say cannot be done. May God bless you so that you will keep God's light shining in this world. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.